Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bakley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bakley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bakley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and today we are going to take a strong look at the word Armageddon. What does Armageddon really mean? And I believe that today some of your questions may get answered. It's a, it's a terminology that's being tossed around the world now, and uh, in some ways it may be leading people in different thought processes to react differently. We're going to take a strong look at it. You might be saying, Pastor Begley, I hear it all the time in the news now. There's leaders of the world talking about it. I'm concerned that maybe that the end of the world is near. Can you help me understand where in the Bible does it mention Armageddon? And can you show us how close we are to this end time event? We'll come right back in a moment with more on the coming apocalypse. The armies of the Antichrist are amassing on the ancient plains of Armageddon. They only have one goal in sight, the prophetic timepiece called Jerusalem. Pastor Paul Begley has gathered experts to expose the diabolical plans encroaching on our everyday lives to ultimately bring us face to face with the Antichrist. Learn more in Armies of the Antichrist, available now on DVD or download. All right, all right, guys, let's take a look at this. What does Armageddon really mean? And, you know, first of all, the word apocalypse. You know, the book of Revelation is really the book of the apocalypse. The word apocalypse, a Greek word, it really means the unveiling or revealing, okay? So that, that word alone has been taken out of context when you hear the word coming up, it's, it's apocalyptic or it's the apocalypse. People have all kinds of thoughts what that really means. And they associate it with destruction, de devastation, war, thermonuclear annihilation, famine, disease. We even have a terminology we use even in the book of Revelation chapter 6 when it talks about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It really doesn't say that these are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It does talk about four horsemen that John saw, which brought about four different types of catastrophic events, or at least a major changing of the world. And so we use that term. Same thing is happening with the word Armageddon. You know, the first time I saw the movie come out, Armageddon, and it had Bruce Willis in it and a few others, and they were all going up there to stop an incoming asteroid. So then people have associated the word Armageddon with devastation or an incoming asteroid. It's going to destroy the world. But really, that's not what the word Armageddon was used by Scripture. Let's go to the 16th chapter, actually, of the book of Revelation and take a look at this where God mentions it and in what context? Uh, I could start at the beginning of the chapter, but right now, let's just start on the 12th verse. The 12th verse in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, says, And the sixth angel, and there's seven angels, the sixth angel poured out his vial, or his bowl. There's seven bowls, or seven vials, of the wrath of God. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, and that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, something you may not realize, but the river Euphrates is drying up. The, it's never been this low. I mean, seriously. And um, I've got, I can show you where, where it was just, you know, less than 10 years ago and where it is now, it's unbelievable how much the river Euphrates has dried up. So it's fulfilling biblical prophecy of the end times. And it says that when the river Euphrates dries up, it's going to create 
uh, a way for the kings of the east to be prepared. Prepared for what? And who are the kings of the east? Some people say, well, that certainly would be China, maybe, and some of the Asian nations. And others say, no, you have to look at some of the, uh, the eastern uh, portion of the Middle East, uh, okay, uh, and others. But let's read on. Here's what John saw. Remember, the book of Revelation is a revealing or an unveiling. He saw in the spirit, he said, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. So they were demonic, unclean. They would look like frogs. Uh, they come out of the mouth of a dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So the dragon, many refer to the red dragon as Lucifer. He's called that, or Satan, the devil, in the uh, other chapters in the book of Revelation. So he saw this unclean spirits come out of the mouth of Lucifer and out of the mouth of the beast, which could be the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, which we know who he is. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So these unclean spirits, blasphemous spirits, start manipulating world leaders. And these world leaders begin to prepare themselves for the ultimate confrontation, the ultimate battle. And the very next verse in verse 15, Revelation 16, 15, Jesus speaks in red letters and says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So Jesus speaks before the battle. Jesus says, I'm coming. I'm coming like a thief in the night. We know that that's what he was, um, how Peter described him when he said uh, that the Lord would come back like a thief in the night. We know that Jesus said, in an hour you think not, the Son of Man will come in Matthew 24. We know that he said, watch and pray for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. He said, uh, you know, Jesus said, look, nobody knows the day nor the hour. No, not the angels in heaven, not the Son of God, but my Father only, uh, but be ye ready. And so, and even Jesus is compared to the five, the five wise, the five foolish, the ten virgins who knew the bridegroom was coming. So we've got scriptures all over the place saying that we do not know the day nor the hour that Jesus Christ is coming, but we know he's coming. And now right here in the 16th chapter, Christ speaks and says, behold, I'm coming. And then verse 16, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. It's a location. Now, uh, that location is believed to be the Valley of Megiddo and the Mount, mountain of Megiddo. I've been there many times. It is a, uh, the Mount Megiddo is where King Ahab and Queen Jezebel had their palace. It's also where they uh, sacrificed children unto Baal. Um, it's, and, and then also, just, just a little bit from there, there's another mountain there called Mount Carmel. That's where Elijah the prophet had the great contest against the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the grove, and where he built an altar and said, let the God that answers by fire be the true and living God. And Elijah, of course, called the fire down from heaven. And But if you stand on Megiddo, or if you stand on Mount Carmel, both of those locations, you have an incredible view of the valley of Megiddo, which is Armageddon. So it's believed that that is the very location of the great final battle that the Bible talks about, which is coming. And you know what's amazing about this location? It's a huge battlefield. It's not just... It's not that it looks like the most perfect battlefield. It's been used as a battlefield before uh, and several times. And even General Patton was there in World War II. And when he was there at, with the Allied forces, he said, I've been here before, okay, referring to times past. He, 
he believed that he'd even been there before, but, and he believed that he was meant to be there. Maybe he was thinking for the Battle of Armageddon. I don't know. Of course, World War II was a time like we'd never seen before, and a lot of people thought with Hitler killing 6 million Jews and 7 million Christians that maybe he was the Antichrist and that this was the end of the world, but it wasn't. Now, verse 17 says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and every mountain were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. So we have two things going on here. A tremendous setting up of the final battle called Armageddon and a location that is named that Armageddon and the fact that the kings of the east are going to come there to fight going over the dried up river Euphrates. Now folks, as, as the taping of this broadcast, the river Euphrates has never been this low. Matter of fact, there is in the bed, the bedrock of the river, just recently, uh, people were going through there with cameras and they came across stone steps that led into underground tunnels where something or someone had lived thousands of years ago. But we didn't even know these steps existed because they've been in the bottom of the river Euphrates. And you say, all right, Paul, I mean, come on now, you're, you, you know, it's, you're, you're reaching. I'm not reaching. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, it's incredible who in the world built these steps and these tunnels and who in the world was living under the, under the river. Uh, I mean, how does that work? Now, the river Euphrates, you have to understand, is a key part of this. And even if you go back to Genesis chapter 2, the river Euphrates is one of the four rivers that flowed out of the Garden of Eden. So the river Euphrates has a very powerful prophetic and spiritual uh, aspect to it. Even as we speak, the river Euphrates runs from Turkey into Iraq and Syria, and, and it empties into Iran and to the Persian Gulf. Those four countries have the river Euphrates. Also, right in the middle of the river Euphrates along that trail is the city, ancient city was Babylon, where the children of Israel were carried away captive for 70 years, which was prophesied to happen by the prophet Jeremiah. And so, and then it was the prophet Daniel who then told the Persian king Cyrus, hey, the 70 years is over. According to the word of God, we are to be released. And King Cyrus released the children of Israel from Babylon. God even mentions here in this, this chapter those it, that it brings Babylon into his remembrance. The, ba the battle of Armageddon, the end time scenario, even brings great Babylon into his remembrance. Babylon, a city of great wickedness and great uh, atrocities and idolatry. This is incredible information. But when we come back, I'm going to show you even more about the river Euphrates and the valley of Armageddon and where we are right now in Bible prophecy. We'll be right back in just a moment. The armies of the Antichrist are amassing on the ancient plains of Armageddon. They only have one goal in sight, the prophetic timepiece called Jerusalem. Pastor Paul Begley has gathered experts to expose the diabolical plans encroaching on our everyday lives to ultimately bring us face to face with the Antichrist. Learn more in Armies of the Antichrist, available now on DVD or download. All right, let's dig right into this. I know I've got your attention. Revelation chapter 9, 11. 
I'm writing a book on this. But anyway, let me read to you this verse. It says, they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now, Abaddon means place of destruction, and Apollyon means the destroyer. Okay, so one woe is past, and behold, there comes two woes more hereafter. Now, look at this, verse 13, and the sixth angel. Now, earlier I told you about the sixth uh, vial. Now we got the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Four angels are bound in the river Euphrates. You know, I've read this all my life and until two weeks ago when I seen that the river Euphrates had dried up to the point, the lowest it's ever been in history, there were stone steps leading to underground tunnels under the river Euphrates. And I said to myself, are you serious? Could these be where these angels are dwelling? These are fallen angels. These aren't good ones. And they bring destruction and chaos. Look what it says. Loose those four angels and that were bound in the great river Euphrates. And verse 15, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. So there's four different assaults or four different events from these four different angels that are released from the river Euphrates. And th what do they do? For to slay the third part of men to kill a third of the population of the planet, which if that's today with 8 billion people, that's 2.5 billion people would die from, these, from a, about a 13-month period for assaults. That sounds like to me some type of thermal nuclear annihilation or war. It's very possible. And you might say, well, how do you know it's war? Next verse. And the number of the army of the horsemen was 200,000 thousands, which is 200 million. And I heard the number of them. That's very important. Because at the time that John the Revelator wrote this, there was no way in the world anybody could put together a 200 million man army. But today, there are nations that can do it, and there's certainly a group of nations could do it. And it's very doable. Um, and so here's this situation. Apollyon releases the four fallen angels from the river Euphrates, and they, these four angels bring four separate events to kill a third of the world. Now go with me back to Revelation 16, because again, we're talking about the river Euphrates, and we're talking about four, uh, you know, the events uh, of four again. The river Euphrates runs through four nations, Turkey, Iraq, Syria, and Iran, Certainly, if you study these four nations with Babylon setting right in the middle, you can understand why uh, this area would be so toxic against God. And we've seen this. Guys, the, I mean, the Iranians right now are led by a radical Islamic uh, revolution that happened in 1979. And just in the last few weeks, there's been chaos and rioting and and, and uh, uh, Tremendous uh, assault on the people right in the streets. Many have been killed. They're all very upset. They're protesting of the fact of the murder, beating to death of a 22-year-old lady because she would not wear the scarf. Uh, another school child was 16 years old, was beaten to death just last week. These events are happening very, uh, very significant, and it's very disturbing. Um, we're seeing this happen in that exact area. What gets released there brings about Armageddon. And so I'm starting to think that this great battle that's coming will be fought there in Megiddo. And if I study scripture, I can find in the book of Ezekiel 38 that there will be nations that will come over the mountains, over the Syrian mountains, over the Golan Heights, into Megiddo, into the valley of Armageddon. And some people believe it would be the Russians would be one, the Iranians for sure, uh, the Syrians would help out, the Turks would get involved, and other nations. So we can see that that's in prophecy. So the areas there, now get this, 
The Bible says in Ezekiel 38 that the Lord says, I'm against you, Gog, and that means uh, Gog and Magog. That's what the war is called. And he says, if you do attack Israel, if you come over that mountain and you come into that valley to fight Israel, I will destroy you there, all of your armies and your horsemen and your horses. And the blood will flow to the, to the, you know, to the horse's bridle. And he says, and I will call the fowls of the air, the vultures, the, uh, the, and, and they will come and they will eat your flesh in that valley. Now, folks, this is stunning, but it started 20 years ago. Every year, just about this time of year or so, that vultures, eagles, buzzards, vultures come on their mic as they're migrating through the Middle East, come every year to Megiddo and set all around the place. Over a million of them. This happens every year. And they stay for a few days as if to say, is this the year of the battle? And after they stay a little while, they all start to move on and they go on to different locations. Why in the world are these vultures gathering in a place called Armageddon? It started 20 years ago, and they continue, over a million of them every year. Are they anticipating the great battle of Armageddon? And so when I hear the President of the United States say, we're about to come, we're, up, we're on the brink of Armageddon. When I see President Vladimir Putin name his new general, who he just put in charge of the war in Ukraine, they call him General Armageddon. Um, these are terminology. We hear of wars and rumors of wars. We hear of nuclear annihilation. We hear of detonation and, and tactical nukes. And we're hearing of other weapons of warfare, of, of great destruction, mass destruction. So these terms are being tossed around now just flippantly as if it's okay. This is what's going to happen. Matter of fact, there's everybody, every nation in the world now stockpiling on radiation pills, iodine uh, pills to, to counter radiation in case of nuclear fallout. Even Vladimir Putin created a brand new missile called the Satan II. And he has a brand, he has two submarines. They're the largest submarines in the world. And they're called the Poseidon, the Poseidon submarines. They are nuclear and they have the ability to create a tsunami 1,500 feet high full of radiation. It's one thing that, the, the, that the, a tsunami that large coming in would just do devastation, let's say, to the West Coast, uh, to, to, say, to any place along the West Coast or the East Coast. They can't find those uh, submarines. One of them right now, they don't know where it's located at this moment. They know where the other one is. This is a, a time like never before. So what I'm saying is the Bible's true. The Bible does say there's two things, though, was very Evan, I could go through a lot. I could go to Matthew 24. We could go to Mark 13, Luke 21. We can go through the, all the scriptures of prophecy, and there's a lot of prophecies happening right now that were prophesied to happen. But Euphrates River, why did the Lord specifically tell us that when you see that river drying up, you better get ready? Because the four uh, angels, the four fallen angels that bring the sixth trumpet war, it's called, or World War III, uh, are about to be released and to kill a third of the world. Folks, I'm not saying that it's going to happen in the next few days. I don't know. But I know this. Jesus said just before the battle, he said, I'm coming. I'm coming like a thief. Well, who's he coming for? Obviously, he's coming for the bride. He's coming for those that are ready. He's coming for those that are redeemed, for those that have accepted the blood of Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, I could, I'm not a doom and gloom preacher. I'm really not. I tell people all the time, the joy of the Lord is my strength and salvation. But I would be insane to bury my head in the sand and not tell you that Armageddon is now on the lips of world leaders and the technology to pull it off is in their hands. And Kim Jong-un's playing with the little green buttons. If you don't think we're there, I don't know what else to do for you. I can tell you this. Look at the wickedness. Look at the sadness. Look at the anger. Look at the hatred. Look at the maliciousness of the world. You know Jesus said, when I come, will there be any faith left? We'll be right back in just a moment. 
The armies of the Antichrist are amassing on the ancient plains of Armageddon. They only have one goal in sight, the prophetic timepiece called Jerusalem. Pastor Paul Begley has gathered experts to expose the diabolical plans encroaching on our everyday lives to ultimately bring us face to face with the Antichrist. Learn more in Armies of the Antichrist, available now on DVD or download. All right, folks, all right. Now just calm down a minute. I know, I know, I know. Uh, you're like, Begley, you hit me. <laughs> you hit us hard today. Well, uh, I mean, I can give you the cotton candy version or I can tell you the truth. The truth is the world's in trouble. The truth is the world has gone mad. But there's good people in it, good people sane, actual, God-fearing people in this planet. And the Lord is not going to forget you and I. The Bible said, the Lord said that, uh, you know, he would not suffer his children unto wrath. We are not going to have the wrath of God poured out on us. But we may experience some tough times. We may see World War III break loose. I can't tell you that we won't. There's too much scripture that tells us that there's a great persecution yet to come upon the body of Christ. But I will say this. The Lord said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Let's have prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, now we know these scriptures are true. And we're not running away from them. We're willing to read them and be blessed by them and to understand them. Help us to have strength. Help us to have courage. And help us to have faith in you, that you're coming for your children, for your bride. And Lord, if there be any sins in our lives, we want to repent of that now. We want to make things right with you, Lord. Open our eyes that we may prophetically see that when we hear these words on the news, that we're not fearful, we're not afraid, but that we're confident. And we have the assurance that obviously your scriptures are coming to pass. So Lord, we thank you for your mighty blessings and for your peace that gives us that passes all understanding in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Folks, you could find out. Uh, I talk about the armies of the Antichrist. I have a DVD series. I think you should get it. And a lot of other stuff at my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Really should get some of this information to help you prepare for what's coming and to not be caught off guard or be stunned by the terminology that you'll hear world leaders, they're already talking about new world order, you're already hearing all those things, so don't be shocked by it. We're living in the last days. I will see you next week right here on The Coming Apocalypse.